everyone and welcome to my June plan with me video. If you are new around here, my name is Thea and I make videos mainly about bullet journaling. I'm really excited to share this theme with you and this was actually my first theme in this new journal that I set up in my latest video. I will link the new picture set up in the cards and in the description box so you can check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Anyway, let's start off with my cover page. I drew some random things, so I guess I have to explain a little bit where the inspiration came from. As June is officially the month when summer begins here in Finland, I really wanted to do a summer theme. Last year I did a midsummer theme, which I really loved, so I incorporated some elements of that into this cover page as well, like the little wildflowers. In June I'm going to travel to Berlin to see my sister as she lives there and I wanted to include some travel elements to this theme because of that, so that's why I drew the backpack in here. Drawing backpacks was a new thing for me and a bit of a challenge, so I looked up some reference photos when I was getting this to get the shapes and the proportions right. By the way, I'm definitely someone who prefers having a backpack instead of a handbag, as I usually go everywhere by bike and backpacks are a little bit more convenient for that. I would love to know if you are a team backpack or team handbag, by the way. Backpacks with these kind of straps in the front are my favorite and I don't really know why. Maybe because they make the backpack look a little bit more interesting and decorative. Anyway, because the cover page looked like it was missing something, I decided to draw a butterfly to make it a bit more summery and fun. The last time I drew a butterfly in my bullet journal was in 2018, so I guess it was about the time to draw another one. I also looked up some reference photos of butterflies in different positions to get the wings right and I definitely recommend doing that if you are drawing something for the first time. I often do that for the different items or animals that I draw and later try to draw them from my memory. Now that the line work is done, we are moving on to the coloring process. I of course went for a neutral color scheme with some pinks in it, as I've been loving it lately. And I think a light blue would work really well with the colors too, so if you are not a fan of pink, maybe you can try that. I actually used a new markers that I recently bought for the coloring and these are markers from Rayola Colors of the World set. It has different shades of browns and pinks in it and some really light shades as well which can be sometimes a bit difficult to find. By the way, I have listed all the products that I use in this video in the description box so go check that out if I forget to mention some of the pens for example. After adding some shadows, I decided to draw a grid pattern to the flaps to give the backpack a bit more dimension as I feel like it would have looked a little bit too flat otherwise. In my opinion, bigger illustrations like these really need some extra details and shadows, so they look a bit more interesting and three-dimensional. With small doodles, you can't really tell if there are streaks from the markers, for example. I'm now adding details to the pink parts with a light page color, because I didn't want to make the backpack too pink or bright. I also went over the shadows with a light pink, so they don't look too muddy or like they are totally different colors. Now looking back, using pink might have been a bit better idea, as I feel like the pink turned out a tiny bit muddy, but that's okay. <laughs> Sometimes you need to do some trial and error to figure out what you prefer, and that's part of the process. By the way, I think I found a way to avoid streaks when coloring with water-based markers, as I noticed that every time I lift the pen from the paper, the area will get a tiny dot or darker area. You can move that little area if you don't lift the pen and go back and forth instead of drawing lines and lifting the pen, if that makes sense. I usually try to lift the pen in the areas where I want shadows or more dimension. You can also hide streaks by going over them to create shadows, which I always like to do. 
Anyway, now I'm just coloring in the butterfly and I decided to make it pink so it would match the backpack. I also used some warm browns in the edges of the wings to make them a tiny bit darker. Finally, I added some details with a gold gel pen. My trusty old gold jelly roll ran out of ink in the middle of my new Bujo setup and I still haven't bought a new one, so I used a Uniball Sig Not Gel pen instead. I actually prefer the jelly roll as it looks a little bit more greenish gold and more subtle compared to this gel pen, which is more of a yellowish gold. The Unipo Signo pen also has a thicker pen tip which makes adding tiny details a little bit tricky. <laughs> As my local book slash craft store doesn't sell a gold jelly roll anymore, I'm probably going to buy a new one from Berlin and I'm really excited to explore the stationery stores that I didn't check out on my previous trip. I think I might buy some new Tombow shades too, as I only have this one green shade that I use for all of my plant doodles, and I would love to have a bit more warmer green shade as well. Anyway, I added some highlights on the right side of the doodles to make them pop a little bit, and now I'm just adding some clouds on the background with a light grey color, and this was a bit of a random, <laughs> but I thought the cover page would have looked a little bit too simple without them. I think I should have added the clouds on the bottom part of the spread as well, so it would have looked a little bit more balanced, but I was scared that I would ruin it, so I left those out. Finally, I drew this grey border with a slightly darker grey, as I again felt like the cover page would have looked a little bit too simple otherwise. As this theme was really random, <laughs> I couldn't find a nice quote related to that, so I decided to make a summer bucket list in this page on the left. Summer is my favorite season as the weather is warmer and we usually get more sunlight, which is a bonus after a dark and long winter. Spring is usually quite rainy here in Finland and I still have to wear a coat when I go to outside, as lately it's been something between 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. One thing that can be challenging in summer is that the sun doesn't set at all, which can mess up your sleeping schedule if you are someone who has trouble sleeping while it's still light outside. I don't really mind it though, as I usually fall asleep quite easily when I go to bed. Anyway, in the summer bucket list I wrote out some things I would like to do during summer, and I made sure to include ones that are easy to complete, so it won't end up looking too incomplete. Going to a summer cottage is quite finishing, and I think it's a Scandinavian thing too. I feel like most people have their summer cottages near water, but our family's summer cottage is in the middle of nowhere, and there isn't even water nearby. I still like going there, as it's a really peaceful place, and the nature is beautiful too. I've been actually thinking about making a travel journal, as I would love to have a separate journal where I can write about my trips and plan them ahead. I don't travel abroad very often, but now that my sister lives in Berlin, I'm going to be traveling there more often, and I would love to keep a track of places and sites that I've already seen. And I think it would be fun to write about the trips to the summer cottage as well. By the way, let me know if you would be interested in seeing a travel journal video, and I could include some vlog footage in that as well, which might be fun. So maybe leave a airplane emoji in the comments if you would be interested. Anyway, now I'm making my monthly spread and I also got the Dutch doors ready with some tabs, of course. I used a one-page layout for the calendar, as it's my favorite one and works really well, so why change it? <laughs> the boxes are 3 dots wide and 4 dots tall, by the way, and you can't fit a lot of events in them unless you have a small handwriting like I do. I left some space on the left side as well, because I'm going to be adding some washi tape for decorations later. 
On the bottom I have a section for weekly planning which helps me to stay more organized and avoid procrastinating which I sometimes struggle with, especially when I should start doing a new art project or design a new theme for example. Lately I've been having some problems with my wrist because it gets tired when I draw or write something and that's made creating a bit more difficult. It started to get better but it was hurting a bit when I was filming this video and doing a drawing heavy team might not be <laughs> the best idea but I just couldn't help myself because I missed drawing a lot and wanted to have fun with it. I kept this monthly setup more on the simple sides though and drew just a little butterfly for decorations. I used a Pigma P and Fineliner for the outlines and drew the patterns inside of the wings with a smaller 01 Fineliner. For the colors I used the same markers as I did on my cover page to keep things nice and cohesive. These butterflies ended up looking quite delicate and not super colorful but that was the look I was going for as I wanted them to look very light and kind of see-through. Finally I just added a light pink grid to the weekly planning section so it would pop a little bit more. And the grid washi tape of course which is from the washi tape shop and by the way you can use my affiliate code TNFUCHO10 for 10% off. You can find that and other discount codes in the description box. Next to my monthly calendar I made my one line a day spread. This one is one of my favorite spreads to make as I really love reading what was happening in my life afterwards. I tried making a memory spread instead in April and May and I actually did like making that kind of spread too but for June I just wanted to have something more familiar and simple so I went for this journaling spread again. In this spread I will just write something about my day and what I was grateful for or one good thing that happened to me but sometimes I will write about the bad days too as I don't want to dismiss my negative emotions. For the decorations I just drew a little wildflower arrangement and bees. This was a very simple and quick doodle to draw and I think it looks pretty cute. To add a bit more color to the spread I drew some simple lines with a Tombow dual brush pen in the shade 992. I use this on every other line so I can make the other lines with a lighter color and I used a Crayola marker for that one. Finally I added some golden sparkles and a ribbon to tie the flowers together and I accidentally smeared the gold gel pen with my finger because I'm not used to this gel pen yet and the jelly roll that I normally use dries quicker so that's probably why this happened but luckily this was easy to fix with a white gel pen. Now I'm making my happy tracker and for this month I decided to use a one page layout with mini calendars as I like seeing a clear overview of how I'm doing with each habit. I first wrote out the title with a Tombo Fudenowski Hattik pen and then I drew little daisies next to the header for decorations. For the calendar grids I used the same Tombo dual brush pen in the shade 992 as I did on the previous spread and I sketched the first calendar grid so I wouldn't make mistakes with them but I ended up making one still. I guess I should have sketched all of them beforehand but oh well. <laughs> By the way I usually erase the pencil marks before coloring because that way I can make sure that they don't show through the colors. I just thought I would mention that as I always cut out the erasing part. Anyway, now I'm just writing out all the habits that I would like to keep track of and I didn't add any new habits for June as I just didn't feel like it. I was thinking about writing sunscreen instead of skincare because that's really important to remember, especially if you have pale skin and get easily sunburned like I do. I kept the skincare toe as the moisturizer that I use for my face already has sunscreen in it. To finish off the happy tracker I colored the little daisies and also fixed the one calendar grid that I messed up. And I actually made quite a lot of little mistakes like these this time but sometimes it just happens when you don't pay attention. I think the mistakes can be a good thing too as it makes your journal more authentic and I guess it's also a good reminder that only robots make everything look perfect. 
As you can see, I messed up my mood tracker layout too, but luckily we have white gel pens as I don't know what I would do without it. I decided to use this layout again which has an illustration in the center and small boxes for each day where I will draw a little icon that describes my mood. The best part about this and other mood tracker layouts that I like to use is that you can add more than just one mood in it. In the center I drew a little backpack but I drew it from a different angle this time just for a change as I think this angle is actually a bit easier to draw as well. I also drew some wildflowers in the side pockets as I thought it would look cute. Near the end of June we celebrate midsummer here in Finland and in the old days people used to do some magic spells in hopes of better future and love life. Most of the spells have something to do with flowers or getting naked and <laughs> I don't know why. Apparently taking off your clothes gives you a better chance of seeing your future partner. Anyway, one of the midsummer spells is to collect seven different wildflowers and put those under your pillow when you go to sleep. I've actually tried it when I was a kid and I saw a bald guy who looked like he was part of a motorcycle club so I freaked out a little bit. I guess I was hoping to see Zac Efron or my cross so I was a bit disappointed. <laughs> The man also looked middle-aged, so who knows, maybe I will meet him someday or my boyfriend will suddenly like motorcycles and save his head. Anyway, I would love to hear if you celebrate Midsummer or if you have tried Midsummer spells and how it went. For this theme, I just drew lavenders and daisies for the flowers as those are super quick and easy to doodle and I can draw them from my memory. Now I'm just adding the final details with white cell pen on the right side of every object as I imagined that the light would come from that side. I really like how this illustration turned out and the coloring also looks nice as this is a bit smaller. Finally I drew a light grid on the background because I wanted that the illustration would be part of the tracker and without the grid it might have looked like it was just floating there. Then I added some golden sparkles of course to give this spread some midsummer magic. <laughs> oh and I also fixed the mistake I made earlier and colored the tab. I decided to color them this month instead of using washi tape just for a change and coloring is also quicker which is nice. Next we are making my monthly review spread. I used the same layout back in April and really loved it so I decided to use it again for June. In this spread I will write some reflections of how the month went and if I was able to achieve my goals. I start my monthly review process by writing the successes of the month and those can be very small things too. For May for example, I will probably write that I'm happy that I was able to make two videos even though I had problems with my wrist. After focusing on the things that went well, I will start to think about the challenges that I faced and I will write those down too. I will also write some action steps to solve those challenges in the to improve section so I don't end up repeating the same actions that can cause difficulties. Oh and I also have a section for favorites of the month so I will remember later which songs I was listening to for example. One of my favorite things in May was the Eurovision Song Contest which happens every year near the end of May. I would love to hear if you watched it and which song was your favorite. I know it's a very European thing, so some of you probably haven't heard about it, but I would recommend checking out some YouTube videos about that, as it's really cool to see the performances and the culture of different countries. Anyway, I decorated this spread with some butterfly doodles and wildflowers. I don't know which flowers these are as I just drew them without thinking about it too much. I tried to challenge myself and drew each butterfly in this setup from a different angle so I would get some practice on how to draw them. Drawing a different kind of butterfly on each spread might be a fun challenge too as well if you want to experiment more with the colors. 
I, however, decided to use the same colors for each one to keep things more cohesive as this team was a <laughs> bit random one. Don't get me wrong, I think having a more loose team works really well and it gives a bit more creative freedom as well. I often get bored if I draw exactly the same things in every spread, so combining a couple different ideas works really well for me. You can always make the theme cohesive by using the same colors on the doodles anyway, so drawing whatever you feel like in the moment makes it more fun in my opinion. Now I'm just making a little pocket on the bottom of the spread where I can store photos, movie tickets and stuff like that. I used a scrapbook paper from Notebook Therapy for this and folded the sides and the bottom of the paper to make the pocket. I also cut out the corners where the paper folds so it won't make my journal as chunky and glued the pocket into my journal with glue tape. I actually ran out of glue tape in my previous video and had to use a glue stick instead which I didn't like because that sticks to the journal more and I always get it on my fingers as well. With the glue tape you can move the pocket around a bit if you need to or if you put it in the wrong place in the first time. I also stamped memories in the pocket and actually used an ink pad for this for the first time with letter stamps, but I think I prefer coloring the stamps with a brush pen because the letters look a lot thicker with the ink pad for some reason. Now I'm making my weekly spread and as always I started off by writing the week number and also making the mini calendar on the top left corner. Weekly spreads are definitely some of the most useful spreads in my bullet journal as I like seeing the overview of the week so I can plan my week and keep everything organized. I also write little notes about what was happening in each day so this spread doesn't end up looking very empty. This really helps me to use my journal more, especially on vacations when I don't have a lot of things on my to-do list. Anyway, to decorate the spread I just drew a little backpack again along with wildflowers and a journal. I didn't add a strap to the front pocket of the backpack so it would look at least a little bit different from the other ones that I drew. I again used a thicker fine liner for the main outlines and a thinner one for the details but I think I could have used a slightly thinner one as well to make the difference a little bit more clear. For the actual layout I used this box layout that I used back in February. These boxes are 12 dots wide and tall by the way. On the right side I left some space for writing notes and highlights of the week. I really like this layout as it has a lot of writing space and also some room for decorations which is always fun. For writing the weekdays I used a normal printed handwriting which is actually the one that I learned in school. I was actually really surprised that in some countries they don't teach printed lettering or handwriting in school because here in Finland we learn the printed first and then the cursive but nowadays they don't even teach cursive anymore. But cursive is probably a lot older than the printed writing so I guess it makes sense. I am going to make a tutorial about printed handwriting sometime in the future but it will take some time as it comes so easily for me that I have to think about how I'm going to break it down into small steps. If you didn't know I actually studied elementary teacher education so I know how to teach writing for kids but I guess it's a little bit different thing for adults or teenagers as we have better hand-eye coordination. I would love to know how you learned to write or if they teach printed writing in your country so let me know in the comments. Anyway now I am just finishing the coloring of the doodles by adding the white highlights. You can't really see them on the leaves but I added them there still because I guess adding highlights everywhere is a habit to me at this point. It makes a big difference on the backpack so in my opinion as it's a bit bigger and you can actually see that the highlight is there. I wanted to make the empty space on the right a bit more decorative so I cut out some paper from Notebook Therapy scrapbook paper set and added that under the note section so I can write notes on the both sides of that if I feel like it. 
Then I made a little collage on the bottom right corner because that was still looking a bit empty. I don't usually make collages so I had no idea what I was doing but I think it turned out alright. Now it's finally time for the final flip through of my June bullet journal setup. I really love how this theme turned out and I can't wait to start using this brand new journal. Drawing these illustrations was a lot of fun as I missed drawing a lot and I think they turned out cute. I feel like this setup also has a nice balance between simple and decorative and you could also take just few elements from this theme like the wildflowers, butterflies or traveling so I hope you found some inspiration from this video. Remember that your bullet journal doesn't have to be as decorative as mine is as it's supposed to fit your needs. Anyway, make sure to leave thumbs up in this video if you enjoyed it and maybe leave a butterfly emoji in the comments if you watched till the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!